All right, good morning, incoming kindergarten parents. Really excited to share information about the start of kindergarten for you and your student. I'm Bob Gilmer, coordinator of communications media. And basically, I'm just filling 20 seconds of your time or so <laughs> until we're ready to get started. Um, as we're waiting for our room to fill up here a little bit, um, as we navigate the Zoom interface that everybody's getting into, I just want you to take a look at the bottom of your screen right now, and you're going to see a little area called Q&A. Uh, and that's where you're going to be able to ask questions today for today's webinar. Uh, keep in mind, we've got a, a good, solid presentation with a lot of information. So if you could, we'll just wait a moment until we get through the presentation before you start asking questions. And then uh, that way we can um, make sure we're not trying to deal with questions that we've already answered within the presentation. Also, keep in mind, if you have particular questions about your student, uh, particular issues or questions for your school that are just for you and your family, that's something you'd want to save and call the school for. So generally, we're just talking about questions that would affect all kindergarten students in our schools. And um, that's our ground rules for today. So that being said, Looks like we finally topped out in a room. I think I've filled the time appropriately. I'm really excited to introduce to you your superintendent, Dr. Todd Bauer. Todd, good morning. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Bob. Thank you for that introduction. Um, and thank you for those ground rules. I kick off most meetings with those exact words. So uh, thank you. Yes, please. We have an incredibly talented group of people here to provide you with really important information regarding the start of kindergarten. And if you could hold on to those questions till the end, that way the Q&A isn't flooded with questions that we have to sift through and which ones were already covered and not. So just please hold on. Uh, with that, uh, again, thank you, Bob. I am Todd Bauer. I'm the superintendent here in the North Penn School District. This is my third year uh, as a superintendent. I was the assistant superintendent before that, the high school principal before that. And um, I am always inspired by our kindergarten educators and the magic that they make happen every day. Um, so we have a great leadership team here, and um, I'm going to introduce our chief academic officer, Dr. Mike McKenna, and Dr. McKenna's role was uh, director of elementary school, and he formerly uh, an elementary principal for roughly a dozen years. Um, so you are in great hands with this team, whether this is your first child to go through kindergarten or your seventh, uh, it's still a really, really exciting time. I remember when my kids were headed into kindergarten and the excitement and nerves, and just know that they are headed somewhere where people will care about them, love them, and have the same goals for them that you do. So uh, with that, Dr. McKenna, please take it away and introduce our outstanding panel this morning. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bauer, for that introduction. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining our team this morning uh, for this kindergarten information session uh, for the 24-25 school year. Again, I'm Mike McKenna. My title is Chief Academic Officer. My main responsibility is everything elementary. So overseeing the 13 elementary schools. Uh, I also uh, oversee uh, some of our special education as well. Uh, I'm also a proud North Penn graduate and actually attended Inglewood Elementary uh, many years ago. Uh, we have a great panel this evening with some, or this morning for with uh, some of our administrators and teachers uh, here in North Penn. Uh, we have Dr. Pamela Hart, who is our Director of Curriculum and Equity. Uh, we have Mr. John Winkle with us this morning, who's the principal of Oak Park Elementary. Uh, we have Mrs. Marisa Neeson, who is our early learning coordinator for the district. Uh, and we have two kindergarten teachers with us this morning. Uh, Mrs. Kristen Muth, who's a uh, teacher at Oak, or, uh, York Avenue Elementary, and Carolyn Leake, who's a teacher at Culp Elementary. So that is our panel uh, this morning. Uh, and again, we have a great uh, session for you. So again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, to kick us off, uh, very appropriate to share our vision statement. So I am going to read this because I do think it's really important uh, to kick us, kick our presentation off with our vision for mm -hmm. kidding here in the North Penn School District. Uh, the North Penn School District will implement a full day kindergarten program in the district for all students. Our program will provide a strong foundation in literacy, mathematics, and social and emotional learning. Students will be afforded increased opportunities to engage in all content areas such as art, music, physical education, library, social studies, and science. And we believe all students can and will learn in a caring, nurturing environment so that they are educated to their fullest potential. Uh, and again, that's our vision for kindergarten here in the North Penn School District. And I'm gonna turn it over to our early learning coordinator, uh, Mrs. Marisa Neeson. 
Actually, you're going to turn it over to me, Pam Hart. So um, I'm delighted to be here. Welcome to kindergarten, everyone. Uh, we recognize uh, that each one of your children are entering kindergarten with diverse experiences and very unique ones. Uh, we are committed to meeting each child where they are, and our hope is that the kindergarten experience will really provide a strong foundation in which children develop a strong sense of confidence and curiosity as well learners and also feel really connected um, in our classroom, school, and larger North Penn community. With that frame, uh, we want to just kind of highlight some of the ways in which we um, structure kindergarten in order to reach those goals. Um, from an academic perspective, uh, we do use the Pennsylvania core standard as a foundation to frame the instructional practices and the educational experiences that your children will engage in. Our goal is to really provide opportunities for them to engage in rigorous academic work. And the idea of rigor is that we recognize that each child enters kindergarten with very different experiences. We meet them where they are. We want for them to be engaged and challenged throughout the entire year in ways that are most meaningful. And our goal is to use our kindergarten first and second grade years to develop children as readers and writers so that by the time they get to third grade, uh, they're able to use those skills to learn and grow. Kindergarten is not just an academic experience, it's also one uh, that we recognize is really important around social emotional learning. Um, and so we do everything we can to really be able to strengthen relationships be among and between our students, um, the staff members as well, and really have opportunities for them to um, really engage in purposeful play as they learn lots of different skills and techniques kind of moving through. Overarching, we recognize um, that our kindergarten team very much grounded in what is developmentally appropriate for five and six year olds and all the decisions that we make for our program are with that in mind. Turn it over to you, Mr. Winkle. All right, thank you, Dr. Hart. So John Winkle, principal at Oak Park. Um, this is kind of a snapshot at what an instructional day will look like for kindergarten. Now, it looks like a lot. It looks really packed, but let's focus on some key things that are part of our instructional day for all kindergartners. First thing I want to bring to your attention is two recess periods. It's very important to get kids outside playing, interacting with each other, learning how to interact with each other. So purposely putting two recess periods into the day, making sure kids get that break. You'll notice there's a lunch period that happens every day. We'll get into the special areas a little bit later in the presentation, but every day students will have either PE, music, art, or library. And you'll see the various other components of the day. We'll get into some of the details here within the uh, program. It looks like a lot, but I want to focus on the fact that it is kindergarten. So our kindergarten teachers take these instructional minutes and they weave together a beautiful day that is well packed with information, education, learning experiences, but also keeping in mind that we are dealing with five-year-olds. So it is a delicate balance of learning, but also that social emotional learning that Dr. Hart was talking about, adding play in and having a good time in kindergarten. So let's kick it over to Carolyn with maybe some sample schedules here of what the day could look like when we take all these minutes and we dive into an actual school day. Thanks, Mr. Winkle. Um, I'm Carolyn Lake. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers over at Culp. This will actually be my 21st year, so I've been doing it for a little while. Um, what we have here is a typical schedule of kindergarten. It's going to be different at each building. No building is going to have an identical schedule because we're meeting the needs of the entire building, but this is kind of similar to what it is. This is how the schedule starts during the beginning of the year. We also realize that kindergartners don't have a great learning stamina when they start the year. So they need a lot more break time and kind of free play time. Um, so we build up the academics as the year goes on. So our minutes actually change a little bit uh, where we start and where we end um, as we develop our learners. But each day always starts with exploration stations, which is always a really exciting part of the day. We'll be talking about that a little later, but it allows our students to have a choice in how they're starting the day to be successful when they first come in and to have a really fun time. It's something to look forward to when they come in during the day. 
We also then move into a morning meeting, which all of our schools incorporate, and we even incorporate it in other grades because we are building that community in our classroom. Um, after that, we might get into an ELA type situation, which we'll talk about what that looks like. And then we have a recess because that's been a lot of learning already. Um, afterwards, we'll come back. We'll probably do a little bit more ELA. We have a win time, which is what is needed. So students will be working in groups based on the skills that they need. Um, and then we have a lunch break. After lunch, most schools have um, a quiet time. Um, in my school, we have towels and the children actually lay down and really, really rest. Um, it may look a little bit different in other schools, but it's kind of a chance to just calm down and get give your brain a chance to rest and get ready to learn some more. Um, that is something that you'll see the times change on. At the beginning of the year, we'll be doing a full half hour. By the end of the year, it'll be more like 20 minutes because their stamina is going to increase as the year goes on. Um, then we move in, we have about an hour of math, um, and then we need another recess. Um, we also have our specials. Most specials wind up being in the afternoon across the district because our friends at this age tend to need more of that um, fun type learning experience by that point, more movement type activities. Uh, we have a snack. Your snack may be in the morning if your lunch is a little bit later. Your snack could be in the afternoon if your lunch is a little bit earlier. It just depends on the schedule, but we are very conscious of where students are eating. And then um, we move into our dismissal for the day. So that's kind of like a general idea of what a kindergarten day would look like. Um, so this is more towards the second half of the year, and you'll see that the quiet time has reduced to 20 minutes. Um, the uh, math time has increased to the full hour where it was only 50 minutes in the previous slide. So those are just some general things that we see kind of change throughout the year as that learning stamina increases. Um, and I think uh, Mrs. Neeson is going to talk some more about that learning stamina. Thank you, Mrs. Leak. Um, I am Marisa Neeson. I am the early learning coordinator, and I'm so excited that you're all able to join us this morning. <clears throat> You've heard um, Mrs. Leak mention this phrase, learning stamina, lots of times now. Um, and really, when your kindergartner comes to kindergarten, that is exactly what we're working on. <clears throat> some of you may be wondering, what on earth is my kindergartner going to be doing all day long? because that just seems like such a long day for a kindergartner. And you are absolutely right. We do start out with 100% developmentally appropriateness in our minds, and that is how all of our decisions are made. So as we move through the kindergarten year and your children's learning stamina grows along with them, we do make very responsive decisions. So you saw that quiet time, which is very research supported, allowing those brains to rest, relax, and build up for their afternoon learning, we start to drop that time. Your child will come home from kindergarten exhausted at the beginning of the year. And that's a great thing. That means their brains are growing and learning. Trust us, it will get better as the year goes on and that learning stamina grows. As was mentioned, we do begin every single day in kindergarten with exploration stations, easily a favorite of the day, a very responsive decision and very intentionally made. It allows all children to have a soft start to their day. They arrive into their kindergarten classrooms with a variety of materials laid out for them, Legos, magnetic tiles, building blocks, scissors, Play-Doh, all different types of activities that are very exciting, intentionally chosen to meet the needs of every student in the classroom. And what we're really looking to do here is further enhance fine motor development, those sort of little muscle movements that help us be a successful writer down the line. But we're also really looking at digging into that creative side of the brain. So sort of thinking like an engineer. What I like to say to our team is there's no right or wrong way to do an exploration station outside of safety, obviously, but your child won't sit down to a Lego station, for instance, and be told, 
you must be building a house or you must be building a letter. We look to see what type of exploring our children do. It's an amazing opportunity for them to think like an engineer, for them to collaborate together, for them to share ideas. And it's an amazing opportunity for teachers to really get to interact and know their students. And then along with that, you heard Dr. Hart mention how we absolutely prioritize social emotional learning. And that is completely true in our kindergarten program. An absolute priority for us is making sure we are meeting the needs of our children in all areas. So we do have a second step program, which is done weekly with our kindergarten students and then practiced all throughout the week. They're taught things like empathy, fair play, understanding their emotions, helping to manage their emotions, sharing with friends, really what it looks like to be a learner in a kindergarten classroom with peers. We also begin every single day right after exploration stations with our responsive classroom morning meeting. I would be surprised if you didn't hear your kindergartner talk about the morning meeting because it is really a fun and exciting time. By the first or second day of school, you will probably hear them mentioning their friends in kindergarten by name because every single morning meeting begins with a greeting where every student gets to hear their name and is greeted by all of their peers. They also do a quick share, which is an easy opportunity to just share something about themselves. For instance, what is their favorite color? What do they like to eat? Oftentimes, they'll do an activity that requires them to work together, which is an amazing skill for a kindergarten student. And our fabulous kindergarten teachers have always written a morning message, which is just a great way for them to learn about their day. At the beginning of the year, it's read together. And as our children become readers, they're able to read it independently. Responsive Classroom is just a great way for us to really create that classroom community, establish those rules, really provide that academic choice while making sure we're balancing academic needs with social and emotional. Good morning. My name is Kristen Muth and I am one of the kindergarten teachers at York Avenue Elementary. This is my 16th year teaching kindergarten. I'm going to talk to you about our English language arts curriculum. Our English language arts curriculum is aligned with the science of reading. Research tells us that children learn to read best with explicit, systematic, and sequential instruction in the foundational skills. One of these foundational skills is, <clears throat> excuse me, phonological and phonemic awareness. We practice these skills daily using the Hagerty curriculum. The lessons are approximately 10 to 12 minutes long. Students practice isolating, segmenting, blending, and substituting parts of words and letter sounds through oral and auditory activities. Hand motions are used in these lessons as well. Another significant foundational skill is phonics. Our phonics resource is Foundations by Wilson. During our phonics lessons, explicit instructional routines are used to teach letter knowledge and word study. Students will explicitly learn each letter of the alphabet. We always start with lowercase letters. They will also learn to tap out letter sounds, read and make words, throughout the year. By the end of kindergarten, kindergarten students will be reading and writing sentences. Our foundations lessons also include multimodal activities and we use specific materials such as our foundations whiteboards and magnetic letter tile boards which students can manipulate and make words. Our knowledge and comprehension resource is Wit and Wisdom by Great Minds. Students gain comprehension skills, knowledge, and vocabulary through authentic and diverse texts. Daily lessons include reading, writing, speaking, and listening activities. 
our three modules or otherwise known as units that we do in kindergarten are the five senses, once upon a farm, and America then and now. Although Wit and Wisdom is not a phonics curriculum, it is aligned with foundations. And we use a wonderful resource from great minds called geodes. Geodes are information rich books, which allow our kindergartners to practice their reading skills. The books start out as wordless books. Then we move into sound search books and then on to decodable text. The topics are very engaging and enjoyed by the students. Some of the topics include Pele, the soccer player, uh, the Galapagos Islands, Ella Robinson, Amelia Earhart. Students also learn how the first popsicle was accidentally invented by an 11 year old boy. Another block of our English language arts is called WIN. This is whatever is needed. This is when we have um, students are receiving intervention, enrichment, and practicing their skills through targeted instruction. So in math, we use a program called iReady. And this really focuses on, at the kindergarten level, on the idea of number sense. So being able to count, to understanding the number that is more, that is less. How do I make this number in different ways? So we spend a bulk of our year working on building that number sense. We also in include some geometry, some measurement, but a majority is spent with that number sense. We do do a lot with addition and subtraction to help increase that number sense. We do that through three main components in our program. We begin with the try it problem, which is where we actually give a, an example to students and with no instruction, ask them to attempt to solve the problem. And then we move into discussing that, where the children are sharing their thought in how they solved it and hearing what others have done. And then as a group, we come up with a consensus on the answer to the problem. And we are able at that point to really incorporate some of that instruction that we're more used to seeing in a classroom, where we're guiding the children along to, to how to solve that problem in more traditional ways. Although we are telling them there's more than one way to solve this because it's very important for children to understand there's multiple ways to get to the same conclusion. Finally, we end with Connect It, where we're going back, we're giving the children a real life problem for them to work through and use this new information to build upon it. Um, so our program will go through all three components for each lesson, which lasts approximately one week. And we will go through, I believe it is a little over 30 lessons in the year to get them to the end. We also use a program that comes along with iReady that is um, online, that has the students take an assessment that makes that, that helps them know what lessons the child should be working on. And the child goes through it at their own pace on their Chromebooks. They can do that at school. They're even able to do that at home if you wish. Uh, so I'm also gonna talk about our content areas. And the way we teach content is a little bit different. We actually, at the kindergarten level, integrate our content into our other instructional areas. It's not a separate category. So we may be reading a book about the five senses and learning that scientific idea of how we can use our sense of sight and hearing and smelling and taste and touch to explore and learn about the world around us. So we're hitting both the science and the reading components at the same time. So we will hit science, social studies, 
and um, our social emotional learning components through our other programs that we are doing. A lot of our social emotional learning ends up happening within the morning meeting time that we have. Um, and social studies as well comes into there as well. Also, my students this year really, really loved our final lesson in Wit and Wisdom, our final unit where we're talking about America then and now. And they were loved learning how life had changed. Like we made butter in our classroom and they were so excited to see that you could make butter at home just using a jar and didn't have to go to the store and buy it. So um, that was really fun and exciting for them, but integrated our social studies concepts as well. All right, so let's talk about specials. So 45 minutes of every day is consumed with specials. Your child will either have art, library, music, or physical education. Here are the things that you need to know as a kindergarten parent. First of all, it's a four-day cycle. So, for example, in your child's school, they may have art on day one, they may have library on day two, music on day three, physical education on day four. And then it starts back at art, library, music, physical education. Once you know the schedule, that will always be the same. So if you have art on day one, art will always be on day one. If library is on day four, library will always be on day four. You as a parent and I as a parent, I've had two kids go through elementary school. You will constantly lose track of what day it is. Kids are great. They will soon enough learn, hey, mom, I have library tomorrow. Or, hey, dad, I have music tomorrow. They will know the schedule. Most schools are really great at posting the schedule. I know in my newsletter, I post it's day one, day two, day three. So once you know the schedule, it will never change. It'll always be art, library, music, physical education, or whatever order your school is in. Students go, they have fun. Um, they will get library books in the library. They will learn various music in the music class, physical, ed physical education. There are no uniforms. They don't have to worry about uniforms. They just have to wear sneakers, don't wear flip-flops or uh, shoes that have open toes on physical education days because then your toes get stubbed and that's not fun. And art on art days, you know, you want to sometimes send them with not the best clothes on because they do sometimes play with markers or paint and have a good time. Uh, but special is a really good fun time of the day for our kiddos and they will enjoy it greatly. All right. Um, we've talked a lot about the instructional program and the way in which your children will kind of experience the kindergarten day. Um, I want to take just a moment to talk a little bit about Chromebooks. First, I'm hoping that each one of you received a correspondence uh, about the Chromebooks um, from Kristen Landis, who's our director of technology. But we did want to take just a moment to, to kind of highlight some of the important information in that correspondence. We use Chromebooks in the elementary school beginning in kindergarten as a tool to help students become more independent and to be able to engage in pretty personalized experiences. Um, we recognize that for some families, um, the idea of being on a laptop or on technology is not something they want their children to be um, engaged in, in a lot. And so I want to just really be able to acknowledge that we really do use Chromebooks as a tool. Um, we are hoping that all of you will be able to um, um, pick up your child's Chromebook before the opening of the school year. Um, and as you can see on this slide, we're hoping if it's possible, we know that it's not always possible that your children's able to accompany you to be able to pick up that Chromebook. You will see um, the various days uh, that we have uh, Chromebook pickup available and the times and that it will actually take place at North Penn High School um, in the concourse. We also recognize that many of you will participate in our K days, um, and those are days um, that you'll be able to um, go right over to the concourse and pick up that Chromebook as well. For some of you, um, you may be very familiar with Chromebooks, having older children. Uh, for those of you that this is your very first child coming to kindergarten, we, I mean, you may not necessarily be familiar with Chromebooks. There's actually a very short video that will guide you through the process. And when you pick up your Chromebook, you'll be able to have the tech assistance provide some guidance for you as well. Um, so um, just mark your calendars and we're hope that you'll be able to um, pick those up to kind of get the school year started. And we will work um, in kindergarten to help your children uh, be able to navigate Chromebooks 
as independently as uh, possible. I recognize it might take a little bit of time, but we know that they'll be able to do that in no time. Next slide, please. Uh, and just a little bit of information, uh, there is a yearly technology fee for $25 um, per student for each year. Um, you will um, have received information um, providing a little bit of an overview of how to actually pay uh, for um, um, the technology fee this coming year. Um, it continues to be a little bit of a work in progress. Um, so you'll continue to um, get probably some additional information moving forward. Um, but if you have any questions about Chromebooks, picking up a Chromebook, how to pay, um, the NP Family Tech is a great uh, way to be able to um, share those um, questions. Um, and there's actually people on the line all the time to be able to respond to it as well. So let's talk a little bit about purposeful play. <clears throat> As I said, every decision we make is very intentional and with the development of a kindergartner in mind. So whether your kindergartner has been in some type of learning environment since they were teeny tiny, whether they attended preschool for a year or two, or whether this is their very first time walking into any type of learning opportunity, we keep all of that in mind and our amazing kindergarten team makes incredibly responsive decisions. One of those decisions is purposeful play. So purposeful play goes back to that engineering side of the brain, right? Where children have the opportunity to really engage in learning opportunities. They have the chance to think with, demonstrate academic rigor, right? Like that big thinking, but in child-friendly ways. Very intentionally planned learning opportunities that target those learning standards that you heard Dr. Hart mention early on. Know that these learning opportunities are thoughtfully planned and organized for learning experiences, keeping in mind that play is the way that children work. When you looked at our kindergarten schedule, you saw all the different components of our day. What we want to make sure that you know is each and every part of that day is as important as the next. So we really don't look at recess, for instance, as a break from learning, we look at every part of the kindergarten day as something that they're engaged in and their brain is growing with a developmentally appropriateness in mind. This right here is just a teeny little bit of research to help you understand on what we base those decisions. So when we think about play, we th sometimes it's looked at as if it were a break from serious learning. But we know as a kindergarten team, play is actually the way that children learn. And so we keep that in the forefront of our minds. If you look at that little research statistics there, statistic there and think about in order to really learn something, the number of repetitions that you need to do it, unless, of course, it is done through play. Your child will need a backpack to bring to school every day. Uh, the backpack should be big enough to hold the Chromebook, your child's library book, and folder. We ask that you make sure that your child can open and close their backpack independently. Another feature when choosing a backpack to look for that we recommend is that the backpack have a pouch on the side to transport your child's water bottle. It is not a good idea to put the water bottle inside the backpack because they usually leak and the contents of the backpack do get ruined. It happens a lot. So we highly recommend that if you can choose a backpack with a, you know, a pouch to carry the water bottle. Um, also a good idea is to, if you haven't done so already, to designate a spot in your home where the backpack is kept. So that way your mornings run smoothly. You know where you and your child know where their backpack is each day. Your child is going to enjoy both lunch and snack at their elementary school this year. Know that when planning our schedules, our absolutely fantastic principals who have the huge job of creating a master schedule are very intentional in attempting to balance that lunch and that snack so that your child isn't hungry throughout the day because we know that they need a nice full belly in order for their brain to, brain to be able to grow. 
A couple of things we want to share with you is this is a really big step for a kindergartner being independent. So when packing a lunch and or a snack, please be mindful of something that your child can manage independently. Snacks, whether your child gets lunch at school or not, snack is provided by the family unless your specific elementary school does tell you differently. So when packing a snack, know that it is in fact a snack, not a full meal. So think of something that would help your child continue to um, grow, grow their brain throughout the day. A small bag of goldfish, some pretzels, a cheese stick, a little container of fruit. When thinking about a snack, think of something that can be easily managed in a learning environment like a classroom. So something they can easily open, that they can navigate all on their own or as close to on their own as possible. Please know that if your child is struggling with any part of their snack, our absolutely amazing kindergarten team will be there to assist. But it is a really nice way for them to demonstrate independence and show that they're growing up. If you are someone who packs a lunch, please sort of think along those same lines. There are not microwaves available to heat up any type of food. So what can your child handle independently? What is something that they really do like to eat to make sure that they can eat their lunch? And what is something that they can manage in a relatively short amount of time? While our kindergartners do have a 30-minute lunch period, they also do enjoy chit-chatting with their peers. That social-emotional growth is super important, but we do want to make sure when their teachers come back to pick them up, they have, in fact, enjoyed their lunch. We sometimes recommend to parents, as you prepare your child to start school, maybe start practicing that independent lunch eating. Sort of let them know they'll be sitting at a table with their friends and there's a time limit in which they have to eat. Help them understand that when they're finished eating, they'll be throwing away their trash, putting any containers back into their lunchbox, just to sort of help them gain that independence. Know that lunch and snack are a super fun part of the day for our students as it's a nice opportunity for them to enjoy food while chit-chatting with friends. If you're wondering what school supplies your kindergartner will need, um, you can go to our North Penn website, npenn.org, select your school, and usually in the information for our school, there are supply lists for each um, specific grade level. Uh, please know that the supply lists are individual to each school and each team, each kindergarten team at each school makes their own supply list. So it's not one blanket supply list across the district. They are specific to your school. Um, you will uh, also be receiving more information at kindergarten orientation from your kindergarten teachers about what supplies will be needed uh, for the year. So independence, we heard Mrs. Neeson talk a lot about that. It's a big part of kindergarten. And I know when I sent my daughter, even after having taught kindergarten for a really long time, I was like, there's no way she can do that. No, no. But she can. And your child can too. Um, so we have to start practicing with them beforehand. One of the biggest things is independence in the bathroom. And it's expected that if there is not a medical condition, that a child is fully able to use the restroom independently. Um, from washing their hands to pulling their pants down, that is expected to be done by the student. Um, yes, we'll help with snaps and buttons. Those can be a little bit tricky, um, but we're not going into the restroom with the children. Um, it's also a great time. I know we're not really thinking about jackets and coats right now, as you know, it's 80, 90 degrees outside, but that's going to come. We have those two recesses a day. And for your student to be able to utilize as much time as possible playing during that recess time, we need them to work on getting their jackets and coats on independently, including flipping those sleeves when they turn in and working on zippers. 
we will of course help them if they're struggling with that. But it's a great thing to start practicing now. Um, also, zipping and unzipping backpacks, that can be a little bit tricky. Opening water bottles. Um, double check that your student is able to do those things independently. And if they're not, it's a great time to work on it now so they can be successful as they come to school. One thing that we highly recommend is leaving a change of clothes in a Ziploc bag um, for your child to keep at school. Um, the, the bag should be labeled with your child's name. Um, this is not only um, for the, um, in case of a bathroom accident, this is in case of any type of spill, we children go on the sliding board and they end up with um, wet pants. They may spill a carton of milk on them at lunch. So even if you're sure that your child won't have any potty accidents, it's still a great idea to leave an extra change of clothes for anything that could um, happen that would need, they would need to change their clothes throughout the day. All right, this slide discusses all the various uh, personnel at our elementary schools. I know you met Mr. John Winkle, our principal at Oak Park in this presentation. Uh, all of our 13 elementaries have a principal who is a uh, important point of contact for your child as they enter kindergarten and as they move through uh, ele their elementary years. Um, also within our buildings, we have individuals uh, entitled school climate coordinators who support students. Um, of course, your child's classroom teacher, their kindergarten teacher is a very important person to reach out to and connect with and ask questions about. Um, and they're really your first kind of point of contact uh, within the building. Uh, we have nurses and guidance counselors, reading specialists across all of our buildings. Uh, we also discussed uh, special areas, um, art, library, music, physical education teachers in all of our elementary buildings. Uh, and of course, uh, those uh, support staff members like our custodians, our administrative assistants in the, in the offices of our elementary schools, our lunch monitors, and also uh, all of our buildings have kindergarten assistants who support uh, all of our kindergarten classrooms. Um, so those might be other uh, individuals that uh, your child or you may meet as you enter our school buildings. Uh, this this uh, slide discusses special education. Um, some of our students do enter uh, our elementary schools with an ind individualized education plan. Um, and uh, that support is outlined within that document and uh, you know, discussed and determined by the IEP team within the building, um, which of course parents are an important member of. Um, if at any time you have questions, if your child does have an IEP and you have questions, um, your child will be assigned a special education teacher um, is, who is an important point of contact. We also have special education supervisors who oversee um, our elementary schools. Mm -hmm. and, and we also have an elementary special education director um, whose name is uh, Mrs. Allison Kukler, who's also uh, a new member of our uh, North Penn School District as well. So um, for support, um, we have special education teachers, supervisors, and then an elementary director of special education who are all very important individuals as part of our special education team. I'm delighted to um, continue the conversation conversation that Dr. McKenna began regarding services. Um, and so I want to share just a few of the additional supports uh, that we have in place for our kindergarten children and their families. Uh, we have an English language development program um, for all students um, who uh, require additional support um, and are developing their English um, language skills. Um, as students register um, in the school district um, and identify the fact that they speak English, um, a speak a language other than English in their home, uh, we do uh, for all children, including our kindergartners, uh, do a beginning of the year assessment to get a level of sense of exactly what level of support that they may need. Um, and then we have um, a 
ESL teachers in each of our schools, um, in some schools, multiple ESL teachers to be able to partner with kindergarten teachers to provide that additional support for students um, as well. Uh, we have extended care um, services offered at each of our elementary schools. Schools. We have before and after care. Um, Jackie O'Bear is the woman who kind of oversees and coordinates uh, the program. Uh, but definitely, um, if that's a service that you um, need, I uh, definitely um, would explore that as well. I'm going to skip Suzuki for just a minute. Um, I know that Dr. McKenna talked a little bit about the guidance counselor being at each of our elementary schools. I would encourage you um, as a former elementary principal and my own children who've gone through um, elementary school, if you feel as though um, you're, you have any life changes, a divorce, a death in your family, um, you have recently moved and you feel as though your child could use a little extra time and attention, I would really encourage you to reach out to the classroom teacher, but also the guidance counselor to provide um, that level of support. Um, they spend a lot of time with kindergarten in general because we know it's a really big transition transition and we want to make sure that students make that transition as smoothly as possible. But sometimes there are other really important life events that take place and a little additional um, support um, is really necessary. So please take advantage of that if you feel that that's um, necessary for you and your child. Finally, um, Suzuki is one of those um, things that I find to be incredibly special and unique about North Penn. Um, so if you um, have some flexible time and are interested in partnering with music teachers and your child um, and interested in um, music lessons, a Suzuki um, is for you. Um, we have a Suzuki um, lessons available to children in beginning in kindergarten through first and second grade. Um, it is a program where we have parents actually partner with our music teachers and children to actually participate in those sessions. Uh, there are two 30-minute sessions um, each week. Um, you'll be getting more information about that um, as the year begins, um, but it is an incredible um, opportunity uh, for our children to um, be exposed um, to to a teaching method where they really get small increments of um, music with the intent of really becoming very um, talented musicians. So stay tuned um, and getting some of that information. Um, it really is a pretty amazing um, program. So homework is not an, a requirement in kindergarten. Um, again, staying true to meeting the developmental needs of our young learners. They have just spent an entire day in school, um, so we don't have official homework. That being said, we do always encourage families to continue that learning and growing at home. It's amazing for your children to be able to read and or be read to daily and really staying true to that play is the way children learn. So encourage them to free play, go outside, engage in creative thinking. Um, anything that really extends that learning to home will help your child continue to grow their brain. Sorry, I had to unmute mute there. Um, Sorry. So oh, oh sorry. I got it. Okay. Oh, uh, are you okay? No, go ahead. Okay. I was having trouble unmuting. Um, you will be updated on your prog child's progress uh, in many ways throughout the year. Uh, we hold family conferences in November. So please um, be aware that your school and your child's teacher will be communicating ways that you can uh, schedule a conference to discuss your child's progress. We also have progress reports that come out each trimester. There is one in December, one in March, and one in June. And progress reports will be available on Infinite Campus. Uh, in March, there is also another um, time for family conferences if the, your child's teacher or you feel is necessary. Please be aware and know that throughout the year, there's always an open line of communication um, with your child's teacher regarding your child's progress. If you have any questions or concerns regarding your child, please feel free to reach out to your child's teacher. This slide highlights uh, just some of the areas um, that we um, implement to ensure um, the safety of our students here in the North Penn School District. Um, some of the ones that we highlight in this on this slide are our monthly fire drills, 
Uh, we do practice weather related drills as well. Um, school security drills, which would include lockdown drills, as well as evacuation drills, of course, very age appropriate for uh, all of our students, um, whether they're in kindergarten, all the way up into the high school as well. Um, we also ensure that all of our volunteers have required clearances. Um, when any visitor enters our building, they also go through our, um, our Raptor visitor um, system as well, just to do uh, our background checks for our visitors in our school offices. Um, we, I also have listed there uh, Mr. Brandon Roan, who's our coordinator of emergency management and safe schools. Uh, his email is also noted. Um, if there's any questions regarding any of our school safety drills or uh, any topics in relation to school safety, he's a great point of contact. Um, you can also reach out to myself if you have any questions in regards to anything in relation to school safety uh, in our elementary schools. So as you've enrolled your child in kindergarten, you should be receiving school readiness tips. They should be coming directly to the email address that you provided when you registered for kindergarten. These were thoughtfully designed by our kindergarten team. They're suggestions to help you prepare your child to be successful in kindergarten. If for any reason you find that you are not receiving them, they did begin in June and do come weekly right until kindergarten begins, please reach out to us and let us know. We just want to make sure we have an accurate email address so you can receive those readiness tips. All right, K-Day. So a lot of questions. I've been monitoring the questions. A lot of questions are coming through about K-Day. So K-Day is not required. It is a chance for your child to experience a school bus ride for the first time. Here's how you do it. These are the dates. These are the times. What you do is you go to the high school. You park in front of the high school. You walk up the steps. You go through the main door and you say, I'm here for K-Day. It either happens in the auditorium or the audion. You go into the audion or the auditorium and they do a quick safety video on what school bus safety looks like. And this is for your kid. This is for you to watch and then you have a chance to experience a short bus ride around the community with one of our bus drivers and then they follow up with some other bus safety related issues now with a lot of questions that have come through can i invite grandparents and aunts and uncles and can the entire extended family come to k-day uh no unfortunately these experiences are very like there's a lot of people that show up for these experiences and there's only so many people that can fit on a bus so we ask that your kindergarten child brings mom or maybe brings mom or dad or maybe brings grandma. Uh, do not bring the entire extended family, but only because of space limitations. I've also gotten questions and I call transportation like, can we bring the fifth grade sibling, the fourth grade sibling, the eighth grade sibling? This is for kindergartners. And so if your fifth grader has never been on a school bus before, unfortunately, this is an experience that is tailored for kindergarten students. So um, it is happening on these days. I encourage you to participate if you're interested. It's not required. And then other questions have come through. When will I find out if my kid gets on a bus? The greatest thing here is to go out into your neighborhood, find other kids and be like, hey, do you ride a bus to school? If your neighbors ride a bus, chances are your kiddo will get a bus. If your neighbors are all walkers and they all walk to school because they live right near the school, chances are your kiddo will be a walker. Bus information is usually provided very late in August before the school year begins. Uh, so you will not find that information out now. That comes later on in August. That's K-Day. So moving along with the idea of the bus um, and just in general how your child is getting home, you are going to be provided with the transportation tag. It is color coded as to how your child goes home. And this is for their safety so that when they are moving anywhere throughout the building, any of our staff members can look at the tag and know, is this child where they need to be? So you will get that at the orientation, the kindergarten orientation day on August 28th. We will confirm how your child is going home, make sure we have all of that information securely in place, and then we'll help you fill out the tag, which you'll then just attach to your child's school bag on the outside. If at any time that goes missing, just let your child's teacher know, and then we'll get you another one.
All right, classroom uh, is always a very important question. When am I going to know my child's uh, teacher or for our, our strong start schools, our home-based classroom? Um, they will be available in August. Uh, we are looking at the week of the 19th, um, but more information will be forthcoming on the exact uh, day and time when you'll be able to access that information. The reason that we do have the day and time is that uh, in the past, we have released uh, uh, classroom assignments across the entire district for students kindergarten all the way up through the high school. Uh, and to ensure we don't have uh, tens of thousands of families going on at the exact same time, we typically have those release times uh, earlier for secondary students and then later for elementary students. Uh, we will be providing more information uh, when you, you will be able to access that information. Um, there's two really two of the best ways to get that information. One is through Infinite Campus. I was actually just answering one of the questions online about Infinite Campus. And just because we've been using that term, uh, you've heard that term. It is our student information system. Uh, it is a, a way where as families can access uh, various information, one of those would be um, your child's uh, teacher. Um, also our report cards are in Infinite Campus. Um, and we may uh, have Mr. Gilmer touch on Infinite Campus a little bit later as we kind of close out the presentation. Um, also, if you can access Infinite Campus, you can also call your child's school. Um, one of the secretaries will, will answer and be able to provide you with your child's teacher as well. So those are two of, of the best ways to um, figure out uh, who your child's teacher is going to be for the year. Uh, but know that we are looking at uh, the week of the 19th when that will be available, but you will receive communication well before that to know when you'll be able to, to log in and access that information. All right, so some questions have come through. So the kindergarten orientation day is Wednesday the 28th at your assigned time. A lot of questions have come through. When will I find out my assigned time? Schools will be sending out this information shortly. I know many of you have to coordinate with work schedules and other obligations. So we'll get that information out to you as soon as we possibly can. That should be coming out from all schools in the very near future. Wednesday the 28th is kindergarten orientation. It's with parent and child. It's not just children coming in on their own. It's parent and child. They have a chance to come in, visit the classroom, learn a little bit about the classroom, the different teachers, and the experience that your child will have at your assigned time. Then the first day for kindergarten students to come in on their own for the first time, their first day of school is on the 29th. Uh, when you come on the 28th, the 28th is the first day of school for first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. So the parking lot will look full and there's going to be kids walking around the building. That's because that's our first day of school for kids in grades one through six. Kindergartners have orientation that day and then their first day is on Thursday the 29th. Thank you so much for joining us today. We highly encourage you to please stay involved. Reach out with questions. Get to know your child's teacher. Your child's future really does depend on it. Bob, there were a couple of questions just about Infinite Campus and maybe logging in and that kind of information. Can you help with that? Any of those questions, Bob? We'll do, yeah. But first, I want to say this, parents. Breathe. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> this is a lot of information. I know there's a lot of questions about the presentation, trying to keep up. We will be posting this presentation when it's over today on the kindergarten information site and updating that other information that you see there, as well as this video so you can go back and watch. The one thing I want you to know is we're going to keep sending you information. And uh, one of the keys to that is making sure in Infinite Campus that we have the correct information to contact you at. And all that information uh, was done when you did your kindergarten registration to start with online. So we want to make sure you have the right email addresses, right phone numbers, right contact information. So a lot of questions about Infinite Campus. The one big thing is when you registered, you would have received an email from us with a code for Infinite Campus. So I see a bunch of questions in here that say, you know, how do I do this? Uh, there is information that was sent previously on how to do that. The key thing when it has anything to do with technology, uh, just you're just going to be imprinted on your brain as you go through the next, uh, you know, go up to 2037 here with your, your class, is NP Family Tech 
at npen.org. So it's npfamilytech at npen.org. So if you never received any of the information or these links for this kindergarten session and you got it from a friend, um, you want to start there at npfamilytech at, G, or at npen.org, npen.org, not gmail, <laughs> npenfamilytech at npen.org. So uh, you should have received information on Infinite Campus. When those schedules are released here uh, near the end of August, um, you'll you'll be able to log in. You'll be able to see what your, who your teacher is. You're going to be able to see what bus your student rides if they're eligible for a bus. So there are lots of questions. Um, the key thing I think I, I wanted to just kind of review a little bit because we take all this by a step. You don't need to know everything for the entire year as we go into these next couple of weeks before we start school. So we have our K-Day. Uh, Mr. Winkle went through that uh, very, uh, very well. You don't have to sign up for those. You just come to those dates. Your kid will ride on the bus. Again, we just ask that it's parents and the student. It's not, um, we don't have an infinite number of buses to, to ride on, but that's also when you get your Chromebook. There will be other opportunities if you missed uh, any of the K days or the Chromebook pickup dates that we published um, to be able to um, work with technology to get your student their Chromebook. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the technology fee. That link is not currently open to pay for that fee. You're not buying a Chromebook. You're just buying the technology fee, which is basically an insurance um, component for that. And that'll be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. So I just gave you a lot of information. So I just want to breathe again. Um, but I, I, I'd like to, on the kindergarten orientation day, because I know there's some confusion. And John, if you could just talk to us about what's that morning look like? Um, parents are coming. There's no transportation. I want to clarify that because that's always a question. On the for kindergarten, kindergarten orientation day? Kindergarten orientation day. What's that look like for the parent? What so in my school, so most schools start at nine o'clock. Um, there's a few early schools that start earlier than nine o'clock, but our doors open at Oak Park at nine o'clock. Our first kindergarten orientation session does not begin till 930. So that kind of gets parents out of that rush when the kids are coming in at nine o'clock, all those morning kids. Uh, there's no transportation. So parents come in, they park their car, they walk their kids in and they attend to kindergarten orientation, uh, walking right into the main office. We all know you're coming. So there are people there that are ready to welcome you, greet you, get you into the building and get you down to kindergarten. Um, so that's how kindergarten or but we are very methodical in making sure that we don't time kindergarten orientation at the same time that rush hour is happening with all the buses and stuff like that. And how are parents going to continue to get information from each of their building principals? Well, you know, that's funny, Bob, because all of us principals are great at sending out newsletters and communication to our families. I've already sent an email out to my families, and I'll probably be sending at least one or two more this week. We are constantly trying to keep parents informed. I'm a parent myself. I have two kids in a school system, and I love information. So the more information I can give you, the more I can put your mind at ease, and the more you can go about your day without having to worry about what's going on in school. Excellent. Thanks. And Carolyn or Kristen, it's up to you guys here to jump in here. I know there's a couple of questions here. We're worried about our kindergarten student going into school the first time, and it's K through six. So they're they're a little concerned about, you know, kindergartners and big kids and lunch and recess and bathrooms. Uh, just talk to me about how we uh, acclimate our brand new kindergarten students into uh, the school as we begin the school year. Uh, how do we allay the fears of parents that worry about like the big kids and my, my brand new kindergarten student? I see Carolyn smiling. That's her question. So you're going to take it. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. So we do. We take tours of the building. So they're going to know where they are early on. Um, they're not going anywhere on their own. We have kindergarten assistants who are supporting any time a child would need to go elsewhere among the building. Um, most uh, kindergarten classrooms, I think all except maybe one have the bathrooms in the classrooms. So they're going to be using those bathrooms. At lunch, they may need to use a more generalized bathroom, but again, there's going to be someone taking them to those bathrooms. So they're not gonna be wandering the building on their own. The principals are very good at making sure the schedules don't have like sixth grade and kindergarten out at the recess at the same time so that, um, it's not a super scary time for them with these big kids all around. Um, however, I will tell you after a while, my kids love the older kids and they want to play with them and they want to work with them um, and they enjoy seeing them. So um, they become their friends. So as much as we kind of go, oh, they're big, the little kids look up to them. So um, it works out really well. That's awesome. 
So uh, it, we're coming up to, we have a second session at uh, 1015 for the Strong Start program. So there's some questions about those. There's parents that don't necessarily know what that is. Mike, if you could just describe the description and who who may be in this session right now should be joining us for the 1015 session for the Kindergarten Strong Start. Just talk to us about the difference and why some schools have it and some don't. Sure. We're, we'll go into more detail, of course, for those families who uh, attend one of those five schools. So five of our schools are uh, piloting and uh, doing our strong start. Those schools are Gwinnett Square Elementary, Montgomery Elementary, Culp Elementary, Oak Park Elementary, and Knapp Elementary are the five schools that are doing strong start to kindergarten. Um, and just very briefly, um, we'll talk a lot more about kind of the rationale, but um, in that strong start, uh, students are not assigned to one particular kindergarten teacher for all 180 days. Uh, we're actually just using the first five days of school for students to kind of meet the different teachers, uh, be grouped in with all of the students who are uh, come to came in, into kindergarten to kind of work and ensure that we have um, more information to make uh, classroom placements. Um, I've had experience with that from another district where it worked extremely well. Uh, we did decide that d implementing that across 13 schools was uh, extremely challenging. Um, so our goal this year is to do that in those five buildings, uh, to gather feedback from families and teachers and determine if that is something that we will look at moving forward across all 13 elementary schools, possibly for the 25-26 school year. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. Um, so we're coming up to 10:10 um, here, so we're going to be wrapping up here in a moment. Uh, I do want to just go back and, and remind you that you know this information will be posted on the website uh, on npen.org. Look for kindergarten information underneath for families. Uh, if you have questions directly for the school about your child or placements or any of those types of things, if you go to the website, you can go to select a school and get the phone number for your school. There you can also see the start times and all those types of things, the school supply list. So I encourage you to reach out to your school to, to ask those questions there. Um, Kristen, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Generally, uh, for parents, what's the best way as we get into the school year and once they know who their teacher is, um, to communicate with with you as a teacher, all of our kindergarten teachers, what's the best way to, to make those contacts between teacher and parent? Um, generally through email. Um, your child's kindergarten teacher will provide you with their email on kindergarten orientation day. Um, it is also very important to um, make note of your school's back to school night, because at back to school night, you will also receive a lot of information that is specific to your child's classroom. And um, so your teacher, your child's teacher will communicate ways, their email at the orientation that and phone calls can also be made before and after school. Um, you know, whenever the teachers um, are able to, they, they do communicate with you at their earliest convenience. Right. And I always keep that in mind that, you know, your kindergarten teachers teaching throughout most of the day. So, uh, you know, don't always expect if I send an email at 10 o'clock that 10.05, you might get an answer because obviously teachers are teaching uh, throughout the day. Uh, so we always ask for a little bit of grace. And if it's something you really need desperately, always call the, the front office. I know there's a lot of transportation questions in here, too. So there are particular transportation questions about uh, different schedules, those types of things. Um, once the schedule is released and you see what your bus information is, it depends on if, you know, stop locations, we usually talk to transportation, but if it's a matter of when you need to pick up your kid instead of taking the bus, that'll be worked out at the school uh, once we get into that as well. So we're going to take this a step at a time. We're going to begin to wrap up here. Marisa, I always like to throw you like, what can parents do right now? Everybody wants to make sure they're on, on task, make sure we're ready for the start of school. What do you ask parents to do right now as we, as we get into the end of the summer here and roll into August? Just really talk positively to your child about their kindergarten experience. Let them know that it's going to be fantastic. They are going to absolutely enjoy their teacher and learning. Um, have them, you know, have their backpack large enough for the biggest library book ready to go um, and just really help them to be excited about school. If there's a, a book like uh, the night before kindergarten, enjoy that with them. Um, but just really talk positively and let them know how much they're going to love growing their brain. Excellent. Thank you so much. Dr. Bauer, final question. 
how the bird's going to do. That's in the q and I'm going to throw it out there. <laughs> how, the, how the bird's looking this year before we wrap up? Um, I'm excited about the changes this year, Bob. Um, I think they should be great. I am a little worried about that they haven't done enough on defense, but the offense should score more points than the other team. And when you score more points, you win. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm more excited about kindergarten uh, and the stuff that you heard today. Just it, it's such a great time. Now, get this, Mr. Winkle. If this is like webinar format, they can't see the people who aren't speaking. Uh, so he's holding up a Steelers sign. <laughs> there we go. Point. I'll speak right now. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're wrap um, up. Yep. We've got is... another session at 1015. Um, again, I just want to, the questions that are in here, we, we, we're going to take these questions and go through them. If we haven't answered specific questions, we're going to try to incorporate that in our next, next notification. Again, this is going to be posted on the website as well. I'm going to let Dr. Bauer wrap up and I'm going to hit the end of webinar as soon as he wraps up and says goodbye. Go yeah, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you to our panelists here for their insights. And I'll just echo what you heard from so many people. Take a deep breath. Relax. Uh, your children will be in the care of individuals who want nothing but the best for them. Um, and I really want to echo what Mrs. Neeson said. It, uh, we don't often realize the impact we have on our kids over these things, um, the, the way we talk about it, behave, act. Um, I, for one... Um, my son is a really anxious kid. He gets it from his father. He's always worried. He's worried, he's worried, he's worried. And the best thing I can do for him is just instill confidence. It's going to be great, bud. You're going to be okay. You're going to be in the hands of great people who are going to help you. And this is the start of your success story. So thank you for joining us. More information to come. Take a deep breath. Uh, we'll do this together. Take care, everyone.